Welcome to Light of the Southwest. I am Jake Sanchez and I'm excited. We are going to be interviewing Bob Fu and Jonathan, what's your last name again? Dingler. Jonathan Dingler. And some of the stuff that I've been hearing is pretty, it's pretty amazing. But uh, before, we, before we dive into, remind me that we're gonna talk about the Mayflower, but before we dive into the Mayflower, which is kind of what's hap the hot topic right now for China Aid, can we just start off with just a little bit of what you got, just a real quick recap on what China Aid is for, for those of, for those of us that don't know right now. Yeah, uh, thank you, first of all, Jake, and thanks to, for the team at uh, GLC yeah. for having us again. Uh, the Ministry of China Aid uh, is um, focusing mainly uh, to advance religious, religious freedom and uh, rule of law in China by exposing the abuses of the persecution, by encouraging the abuse, and by equipping the leaders. Okay, so on the religious freedoms portion, see, this is the part where I think a lot of us kind of didn't know. We, we just kind of, we just lump the underground church in all of China, and we don't really know what religious freedoms there are. So there are public government sanctioned churches but then there's also what we know house. as the house churches, yeah. the secret churches, the underground churches. Can you tell us about, I wanna know more about the government sanctioned churches. What does it look like to be a government sanctioned church, Christian church in China? Yeah, if you, if you still call it a church, I mean, it's the <laughs> government of the Communist Party. You can't even call it a church. Yeah, yeah tries exactly. to paint it as a, a church group. Uh, the government sanctioned church their formal name is uh, called a Three Self Patriotic Movement Church. Uh, okay, a Three Self Self like, uh, Self Governing Self Patriotic Church. You know, kind of a yeah. It was established as a political organization in 1953, uh, right before the Korean War. Uh, so the name was actually initially called the uh, Anti-America Aiding <sighs> Korea Three Self. <sighs> patriotic moment, uh, basically they want to unite so-called the, all the Chinese Christians under the communism to launch this uh, camp, political campaign. And later on, they established this organization. So any Christians who refuse to join this organization would be sentenced to, you know, from death sentence, life in prison, re-education through labor, yeah, you name them. I mean, the pastor who actually uh, baptized me uh, in Beijing uh, spent over 17 years imprisonment for refusing to join uh, this uh, three self uh, patriotic moment. So just, I want to get back to this, but this is just intriguing me. You said he spent 17 years in prison. Can you tell me how he, like, how did he get out of prison? Well, it was uh, until the 1980s, uh -huh. after the Cultural Revolution, you know, the Chairman Mao's Cultural Revolution, and uh, the, the, the second generation of Communist Party leader next to Chairman Mao, because uh, Chairman Mao died in 1976, okay. and uh, then decided to engage this so-called so opening to the outside and uh, economic reform policy. Uh, that's how China has being landed, right? And uh, so the church was reopened, was allowed to reopen uh, and- uh, With heavy stipulations. Yes, with heavy sanctions and uh, ideological brainwash. Ba basically compromising their own Christian beliefs. You're right. To promote Match, the communism, yes, communist to, gender. Yeah, and uh, actually under the current Chinese uh, Communist Party dictator Xi Jinping, uh, he launched this campaign called Sinicization, basically to, to make religion, especially Christianity, compatible with communism and socialism ideology. So in the church, if you are still allowed to exist, the government uh, sanctioned church, you have to pledge your allegiance to the communism ideology and your dedication and loyalty to Communist Party leader Xi Jinping first. They have to pledge their allegiance every Sunday, right? 
Yes, every Sunday they have to sing the Communist Party's national anthem that is before so doxology, wild. before this singing so any worship. Yeah. So if you're going to be a public church in China, government sanctioned church, you're you're going to endorse all of the um, all the uh, political ideology that they have. Yes. And then you're going to sing their national anthem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you and have then to you have, uh, tear down your uh, you have to message. Completely water down your message yeah. that, to make and sure it doesn't, it doesn't filtered, compromise. Your sermon has to be examined pre-preaching. Uh, I mean, before you preach, you have to submit your sermon to the Communist Party's See, Religious this Affairs Bureau officials. this brings up a whole new perspective for me because it's not, you're not just uh, rescuing the underground church and helping the underground church, supporting them. You're, you're being a beacon of light to those that are stuck in this compromised version of Christianity. That's right. I mean, it's really, in the end, it's about the Lordship of Christ, right? Who is the the head of the church is the Communist Party leader, Com Communist Party's uh, United Front Working Department, or Religious Affairs Bureau, or our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are um, in this, uh, this uh, Christian ministry existed. This is the uh, 20th anniversary this year, Wow. 20 years ago. Wow. Uh, basically with the mission is to really walk with those persecuted for their faith in Christ. Even those government sanctioned churches sometimes call us uh, in order to um, uh, ask for help because some pastors were even sentenced to 12, 14 years imprisonment. For what? For simply refuse to take down the cross from the rooftop of their church building. That's part of being a government sanctioned yes. Christian church yes. is you have to remove. Mm -hmm. They're still serving in prison. Yeah. Yeah. So. Can you have a cross inside the church? Well, you can have some like a uh, paper cross, and uh, but you have to have uh, two photos, portraits on both sides of the cross. One was Chairman Mao, one is the Chairman Xi Jinping. You're kidding me. So they want to make sure they are watching the church. So they are the big brothers. <laughs> all right, two things. One is basically if you're going to gather people, it has to it has to promote and affirm what the government's doing, no matter what type of gathering it is, yes. especially if it's a church gathering. Mm -hmm. Number two, you said that's their way of big brothering the church. Yeah. Right. And, so, and plus let, the, the digital surveillance. Let, let's talk about the big brother presence that China has all over China real quick. You're saying that in China, everyone has three Face facial recognition cameras yeah. cameras on them at all times all every day yeah. so what does that what does that look like yeah maybe jonathan can elaborate yeah, a little bit yeah so the the digital surveillance of chinese citizens is pretty you know um, unrivaled in the rest of the uh, first world um, they have not only facial recognition cameras but their social media is monitored uh, severely. Um, their location is monitored with their uh, COVID health app, so they know where they are all the time, uh, whether they've been to a, a COVID area or not. Um, and they also have um, just a, a very vast uh, biometric kind of surveillance of that as well. And so some people may not, you know, they have their feelings about COVID or, or, or whatnot, but their health app, it, it's been shown to um, they use it against dissidents. Um, there was a protest a couple months ago concerning some banks in China, and uh, suddenly all of the protesters that showed up, their COVID app said that they came from a compromised area, so they had to be quarantined immediately. So it, it's things like that. And then in Xinjiang, where they're um, putting millions of people in concentration camps. Modern concentration camp. Right. So they we have, currently have millions of people. Yes. One to two at least, yeah. One to oh, two almost million two million people, people yes. in, in concentration West China, camps. Yeah, in concentration camps. They, they have the most surveilled um, area probably in the world, I would say. Yeah, yeah. They, they have, they have, con they have uh, these Hick Vision surveillance cameras on every street corner, 
outside of people's homes. So this is communism as, at its finest. Yes, that's right. This is yeah. communism running as a, as a well-oiled machine. Thing. That's right. Yeah, yeah. every uh, church, every mosque, <sighs> every congregation, every temples, Buddhist temples, ha are mandated to install face recognition cameras from the pulpit to every corner of the church so that everyone, the participants can be monitored. And then if you become a professing Christian, you have to put a camera at your house. The government will install. Oh, the government just comes in and in installs front one. Of, uh, in front of your door, basically to monitor your moments. This and especially your, uh, you are being mind. perceived as a so-called uh, national security threat. Right. Because uh, you, if you are a leader of a house church, you are, you are deemed as a national security threat. And some were like Pastor Wang Yi, a pastor who was a legal professor, I mean, in a university, turned to be a church planter. And uh, he was sentenced to nine years imprisonment for like s preaching a sermon based on John 3.16 uh, and, and uh, four years ago and um, three years ago. So, and then uh, he was uh, calling for the Chinese president to repent and offer the salvation of Jesus Christ. That's called subversion of state power. It's nine years imprisonment. He and his wife and their even nine-year-old son, along with the two, over 200 members, were all arrested. His nine-year-old son? Yeah, well, all Joshua, and, and they were all uh, you know, abused and, and uh, tortured. Many were tortured. Um, so Pastor uh, Wang Yi is still in prison. So what's the point of if we can kind of shift gears a little bit, once they have imprisoned you, what's the point of being tortured? Like, what is their end goal when they're torturing you? Well, their end goal for torturing those uh, Christians is to make them have a false confession that uh, they somehow committed a crime of uh, disturbing social order, subversion of state power, uh, like blasphemy of the Communist Party leaders. Or so they will torture, so they'll ask them to admit something. Yes. And then also to betray their brothers and sisters. Like you have to surrender. Tell who us who else, supporting is, who else you. is a like, part yeah, of you. Who else are who's part of your Who's funding you. Who's, yeah, who's funding you. Who's hiding and you. And then they will uh, uh, parade you uh, on TV, on national TV. They would uh, make a video and uh, sh to, to shame you. And humiliate you, and uh, basically said, "Look, you know this guy, you know fake pastor." So they villainize you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so it happened to the, uh, of course, church leaders to imprison uh, the uh, human rights lawyers, to political dissidents, and petitioners, even foreigners, foreigners like a Swedish citizen. Uh, I mean, like um, they were also put on national TV and uh, make uh, a false confession of crime, uh, you know, for sp simply because these uh, foreigners were kind of found uh, using their social media, maybe uh, express some dissatisfaction of the Communist Party leader. Then they were arrested and uh, put on national TV. Yeah. <sighs> this is wild, man. So let's take Let's take someone from the underground church who it's, it's clearly a violation of the law to have an underground church, and they, are they also torturing those pastors to try to get them? What, what would they try to get them to admit? They're already knowingly, if it's underground church, it's because they don't want to be caught, right? That's why the communist government, they want to hide religious related charges. Remember the because then they become a martyr. That's right. Okay, so they don't they want, want to. Use to okay, so that makes sense. So then they religion, want them to admit something like that they tried to subvert the government. Yeah, some way. harming in national some way. security. And then they'll catch it on camera. And you know, re and yeah, say recent that. recent years they even use the uh, the uh, business fraud. Yeah, legal of business of operations. Fraud. Yeah, uh, because instead uh, of saying this person is in prison a, for having for his house Christian church. faith. Yeah, that's right. Because. Uh, if uh, they are found, um, basically, your the logic was uh, if you are uh, unregistered house church, they declared you are an illegal organization, 
And then if you uh, set up an offering box, taking tithing offering, then that's called fraud and illegal business management. And already there are several, I mean, quite a few actually are arrested how, and sentenced. How far do they go in, the, in torturing? How far have you heard? Oh, I mean, electric shock baton, I mean, uh, that was very common. And of course, uh, the sleep deprivation uh -huh. is very common. I mean, I was uh, uh, in prison in Beijing uh, for uh, basically organizing house church uh, in, in Beijing back to 1996. That was even earlier. Right. And um, that the first the three days and nights, basically no sleep. I was put on a little stove and uh, you have to sit there. The, the prosecutor or interrogator had their uh, two teams root, uh, rotation. I mean, smoke cigarette against me and uh, knock me down, beat me basically when I kind of could not hold. Uh, and uh, they, they just, uh, that, that was uh, regarded as minor because uh, I didn't get an electric shock baton. But um, several of my coworkers, pastors, uh, after I left, I mean, they were arrested and they were, some were uh, engaging uh, Bible printing, you know, without government per permission, like millions of Bibles. And they were sentenced to three years, you know, uh, five years imprisonment. And several of them were also tortured and they were even being hanged, like uh, on the, on, on, on the, in the air, I mean, to torture you. Um, yes, and uh, so, so this, uh, the, the, the brutality is real and it uh, continues. I mean, the uh, one Christian human rights lawyer, uh, his name is Gao Zhisheng. He was uh, uh, nominated twice already for the Nobel Peace uh, Prize. And uh, he was a very well-known uh, uh, um, human rights lawyer. I mean, actually, before he became a human rights lawyer, he was even awarded as one of China's 10 best lawyers by the China's Ministry of Justice. And after he started speaking up for the vulnerable religious uh, persecuted and uh, wrote a letter, a public letter, urging the Chinese premier to stop, then his law firm was uh, shut down. He was uh, kidnapped, arrested, his whole family was invaded by the public security officers staying in their living room 24-7 for months and watching his uh, young baby uh, and uh, with the young daughter uh, from bathroom, shower room to bedroom. You're kidding. Light on. Yes. So that's how you know, I went to Bangkok and, uh, uh, and organized I mean, uh, their rescue. So I rescued uh, his wife and two children to the United States. But brother, I mean, lawyer Gao Zhisheng himself was tortured. I mean, I talked with him after he suffered eight years uh, in, kind of torture, imprisonment, uh, five years ago after he was released. And um, he shared with me how much, I mean, they used toothpick to torture his private parts. Mm. Can you imagine that? And, and just uh, to get him to... Confess, say anything, yeah. and he wouldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, they used his uh, little young boy, uh, I mean, uh, who was still need to uh, drink the, the milk powder. They said, if you don't, they, they record a video, uh, basically they, because the uh, Communist Party freeze his uh, bank account, basically telling uh, Brother Gao Zhishan, said, you know, your son was crying, starving. There's no, uh, no money, I mean, to, to buy uh, the pot, milk powder uh, to feed him. And uh, unless you kneel down and koto and uh, sing in the Communist Party anthem and uh, say, long live Communist Party, and uh, if you do that once, we give you 200 yuan, like, uh, uh, f you know, $40. Uh, and uh, he was, you know, forced to do that in order to save his boy, his son, yeah. And but five years uh, ago, he was uh, disappeared again, kidnapped again, and nobody has seen any, had heard anything, since. dead or alive, since. Another five years. Yeah. Man. That's how cruel wow. it is, yeah. So, John, since, you've, since you started here, 
what what are some things number one i want to know why you wanted to join this uh this is like kind of painting a target on your back honestly you know and then number two uh what what have what has opened your eyes since you've been a part of this organization right well honestly you know i uh I, have a, I had a personal relationship with Bob before I uh, joined China Aid, um, and I was very unaware of most of these things, but it was really kind of a, a spiritual experience uh, that led me to China Aid. Um, and so when I got the interview from Bob, it was one of those things where I'm living with my parents. So I, <laughs> I talked with them, yeah. and my mom was like, you would never get to do this ever again. You yeah. might not get that chance. And so I, uh, I joined, and I guess joining um, China Aid and being a part of this mission, there's a lot of heavy things about it, for sure. But I think the thing that I've taken away the most is just how encouraging our brothers and sisters are that are in China. Their um, perseverance. Yeah, their perseverance, their faith is really inspiring. And... You know, our, our mission is to uh, expose, encourage, equip. Um, and we hope, of course, to encourage our brothers and sisters in China, but I am encouraged by them. Um, and I think a lot of our American churches here um, could use some of that inspiration and encouragement because they're, they're being persecuted. They're losing their property, their, their um, vocation, anything like that. Freedom. Their freedom, yeah. They're, they're losing everything for the sake of Christ and uh, you know we're gonna be in their shoes one day if we're doing things the right way if we're really pronouncing the gospel and so why not learn from them and and their faith um, so that that's been kind of at the forefront of my mind and and it's not just like kind of this miserable perseverance it, it is a joyful one it really is um, we have our our uh, we have 60 uh, church members the Mayflower Church um, and they escaped China back in 2019, right mm -hmm. before COVID hit. And, um, you know, obviously they're being hunted down by the Chinese government. But the thing that has really stuck out to me about their story is you look at their pictures and their children, they're just so full of joy, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's really, it's touching to me. And so I, I think that the persecuted church is not a miserable one. It's not a pitiful one. It's, it's a very strong, resilient, joyful church. Yeah, so to carry um, what um, Jonathan just mentioned, um, I mean, the ministry of China Aid is not just a one-way street, like, oh, come to send money and uh, prayer just uh, for these miserable Christians who are persecuted, you know, tens of thousands of miles away. And, and uh, number one, they are one body of Christ. I mean, no matter where they are, uh, not, you know, different uh, language, different ethnicity, different continent, they're still one part of the body, of the same body of Christ. So if one part suffers, the whole body suffers. Mm -hmm. So we have a spiritual obligation to remember them in prison. I mean, as if we are fellow prisoners, as the book of Hebrews 13 said. And number two, is, uh, as Jonathan just uh, elaborated, Really, uh, we feel um, the persecution in the biblical text and in the church history uh, has been a, a norm, right? I mean, actually, no persecution is very abnormal period of time. Right. And uh, so, like the book of Acts, when those uh, pr prisoners for Christ, like Paul, Silas, and Peter, when they were imprisoned, they're not like a crying voice, you know, like, uh, oh, have pity on me. Just uh, send a UN Secretary General to help me to get they free. They treated it like an yeah, honor. They are, yeah, they treat it like honor. They are praying. They are shouting. They are actually dancing. Remember in the prison, yeah, yeah. they're singing. Singing the praise is the Lord. And then it was the Lord's work. Then the shackle was broken. Uh, that exactly happening in China too. And, um, you know, the, the pastor who married uh, my wife Heidi and I spent over 22 years imprisonment. And uh, plus another 10 years without even the Beijing resident ID, which means he couldn't even travel outside Beijing. And uh, so those pastors, I want to actually, I think uh, that would be encouragement 
to our uh, viewers at uh -huh. DLC is uh, those brothers and sisters, I think, uh, especially in the West, I mean, even in the United States, uh, I think in the past two, three years, we experienced some kind of a COVID dictatorship, you know, a little bit taste of uh, what lockdown look like, you, you know, you know try make your home as your person, maybe not being tortured as Chinese brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, we have something to learn. We yeah. have something to be inspired. So this is just a recent message I received from one of the uh, uh, persecuted church when their congregation was raided on November this year. And um, I want to read that conversation. Uh, said a, a Christian sister from Covenant House Church in Shanxi was asked by the police, when did you start loving you, your Lord passionately? Hmm. The sister said, I only began to love the Lord passionately after you arrested me. When the shackles wore out my feet, I realized a little bit how much Christ had paid for me. And the quote, and then the comment from the church is, although the suffering remained, the brothers and sisters were no longer afraid, but were very joyful, released, and did not despise even the brothers and sisters whose faith has become weakened. So that is their kind of a prayer uh, items uh, sent to us uh, nearly daily. Uh, yeah. We receive this. Uh, aren't this like a kind of a two-way street? Uh, you know, on, on one hand, yes, we pray for them. We pray for freedom to come upon to them. And, uh, but they are also praying for us in the, in the so-called free world that uh, uh, with our freedom, we can still be faithful. And uh, we can still uh, put our uh, hope on Christ and Christ alone. I think that that's the message. I mean, so I like, I can't put myself in their shoes, but I, I try to imagine our Christian life and our Christian liberties versus their Christian life and lack of liberties. Because here in America, we're, we're free to be Christians, but as Christians, we, we've got this standard where we're free to, to be and do whatever we, we want because nobody can tell us anything, you know? And so, and so we, we're out here, I guess the main question is, is if we would take one of these persecuted Christians from China and then bring them here to just hang out and live a regular life for one week with, with, our, with some of our ministry leaders or some of our, our regular Christians, how different would that life be how would they how different would they view our life right because i know i know plenty of christians who they they have i guess the fruit of the spirit would be self-control and we lack it a, a huge part of the american church lacks self-control right and and discipline and so when i think of these these persecuted christians in china they're not trying to be perfect as much as they're striving to be holy, yeah. right? Amen. And, and that's what I think that we learn from them is like, oh my gosh, their love for Christ is keeping them motivated and filling them with joy and with a peace that you can't understand, that's, right? Yeah, that's, a peace that mm -hmm. surpasses all understanding. Amen. And yet here we are, one little, the gas prices rise and we're, we're losing our minds, <laughs> you know, or something goes, something goes wrong. Somebody says something negative about us and we consider that uh, as persecution. Mm -hmm. That's not persecution. That's just being human. Mm -hmm. You know, persecution is, is being thrown in jail and being tortured mm -hmm. for what you believe and trying to get you to bow to their system, mm -hmm. you know? And so to me, just hearing these stories is provoking, provoking the lukewarm Christian to be hot or cold, you know? 
Yeah, that's a very good point. I, I mean, I myself, of course, uh, had been exiled um, basically uh, since 1996, um, kind of uh, 27, uh, six years ago. Gosh. Um, into the United States. I have some firsthand comparison experience like what you described. Uh, yeah. Initially, we... Uh, it's like a culture shock, you know, right? Yeah, it's a cultural shock, church you, shock. I, I bet when you got here, you um, probably thought you were going to hang out with some Christians and it was uh, going to just be holy and amazing. Uh, and then, I mean, what, I, mean I don't, I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to shame anybody, mm -hmm. right? But, but tell, tell me your experience acc acclimating to American Christianity. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think my first shock uh, uh, was a uh, uh, church shock, I call it. <laughs> um, because um, I remember I was invited uh, to a uh, church in the suburb of Philadelphia. That's where I, we stayed for seven years. Uh, and um, uh, to share my testimony and, uh, you know, uh, and then the gospel and to a group of uh, a youth, basically a youth ministry, they borrowed uh, the kind of a, a church uh, a con a sanctuary to use that for that evening. Uh, so toward the end of my sharing, I was just uh, feel the lead and, uh, you know, say, okay, in, if you're in China, we would uh, make an altar call to these youths, you know, are you willing to accept Christ as your Savior and Lord? And then, uh, so the leader of the organization actually told me, uh, said, uh, no, you can't do that. Um, I said, why? I mean, he said, well, uh, the, that church, one of the church lead elders uh, in that church was there. His son was in that youth group, and uh, he would be deeply offended if you do, uh, like, f you know, co forced conversion or something like An force them call. to make a choice. Yeah, or force them to make a choice. That's the exact word. Really? Yes. I mean, I said, what? Is that a church? You know, kind of a, so the church, one of the church leaders was there, could be offended because if I offer a chance, uh, basically a call for his son to uh, accept Christ. So, you know, this word uh, offend, uh, offend, you know, we're like a, a culture of uh, I feel that's the most distinctive difference. Um, kind of you feel, what do you do? Whatever you do, you want to avoid uh, the... Uh, uh, stepping the, on someone's toes. Yes, and uh, you want to massage, you want to seek her friendly, you want to really, it's, uh, Christianity is a pain-free religion, uh, right? I mean, suffering doesn't belong to and, Christianity. And yet, what are we supposed <laughs> to do? We're supposed to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow Christ. That's right. And yet here, from I mean, I mean, I grew up here, and I I grew up with this, with it being normal, to uh, you know, we're not going to single anybody out. Everybody bow your head, and yeah. if you you know, everyone prayed together. Maybe yeah. there's one person here that, uh -huh. and we don't want to single that person out. Yeah. We don't want them to, to feel, uh. uh offended or yeah, to feel yeah. like all eyes are on them or uh -huh. whatever yeah, and yeah. yet and yet jesus mm -hmm. said he's like if you're if you're ashamed of me before mm -hmm. men right yeah, yeah. i'll be ashamed of you mm -hmm. before my father yeah I, I i remembered um a group of uh, american christian businessmen went to china to fellowship with the chinese christian businessmen so the Chinese uh, brothers uh, were like sharing excitingly, like they have been sharing the gospel uh, wherever they go, even including in the workplace. So the American Christian businessman was so astonished. He said, could you do that? We could not do that. He said, why? So we could be sued by ACLU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> the Chinese brothers wow. replied, so what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you, a, yeah, you yeah. don't know nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> Man, so that was kind of the culture shock for you. Yeah, it was, yeah. Going from mm -hmm. thinking that you're going to have just full-blown religious freedoms now to realizing that we're, we're restricted 
at our own by ourselves. Bond, bonded. I think, uh, yeah, it's a spiritual bondage. It's a spiritual. Yeah. Of, uh, we're in spiritual bondage. Political here. correct. You know, kind of you don't want to avoid certain things. Which obviously it's gospel. getting it's getting worse nowadays. It is getting worse. Um, Fail that. How shifting gears just a little bit. How comparable is our current climate? to China's climate as far as how seriously we're taking political correctness, do you, do you think? Well, I felt um, actually even during the COVID, I started a, a little um, podcast or, or uh, YouTube called uh -huh. uh, Communist Watch, Sea Watch. <laughs> and this is on so, YouTube? Yeah, yeah, I kind of uh, tried to make a comparison of uh, how you know communism would gradually uh, infiltrate. Uh, infiltrate and penetrating uh, from ideology, organization. American ideology. Yeah, social, you know, socialism. And I, I did sense that. I mean, uh, when I studied uh, the uh, history of persecution, it always uh, not immediately start with the, you know, government with the uh, electric shock baton torture you. It always uh, started with the uh, disinformation about your faith. Then, uh, uh, grew into uh, discrimination, then grew into persecution. And each phase actually, according to the expert, they actually uh, make it uh, uh, from passive phase to active phase. So in order to get to the active persecution, you always started the passive disinformation to active disinformation, then to passive discrimination to active discrimination. I feel I think observing what's happening in California, in uh, Canada, uh, in some even European countries uh, during the COVID, I, I see definitely we're in the West already past the passive discrimination against Christian faith. I think wow. uh, Christian faith are definitely now under you know, active uh, discrimination, active perhaps discrimination. in some areas already coming into a government organized passive persecution phase. So you're you're literally watching phases just getting that are getting closer to full blown yes. communism. Oh yes. I, I'm very, very concerned. Because you lived it. I, I really I mean live that that's the worst uh, thing I want to see, you know, Happen kind of here. Uh, happening here in this uh, country built upon religious freedom by the pilgrims the Mayflower, right? Yeah. Uh, the group and coming here to practice their faith uh, and not only privately all oh, offer uh, a freedom worship. That's also political correct. So we're talking about religious freedom. Not only you are practice your, I mean, you're, uh, you, you have freedom to believe uh, and uh, uh, practice in your own private sphere areas in your home and the church, you are supposed to be allowed to manifest, practice your faith in public yeah, and private. Open. And uh, so in, uh, even led to your uh, other faith-driven uh, uh, actions. So the Lord is not just uh, hidden in the church or in your closet, in your home. Uh, he is sovereign overall, right? If uh, he's not sovereign overall, he's not the Lord at all. <laughs> some, some people said, uh, I think that's the biblical Christian faith. I think we are facing that challenge right now. Our faith was being cornered, like uh, compartmentalized into a, a, a certain area. This radical, woke, you know, uh, groups try to set up, said, okay, you can do your own thing but don't come here. This is our area, you know. Uh, that's exactly what the Communist Party tell the 1.3, I mean, uh, actually 130 million Christians now in China. So it's almost 10% uh, of Christians uh, of the population. The Communist Party said, don't you know, touch on the public square. Don't see anything about COVID. Don't see anything about religious policy. What, do whatever we ordered you to do. We are the Caesars. We control uh, er, these areas. And you may offer a little private secret prayer in your closet at home, but don't bring your Bible outside the four wall of the church building. Don't preach your, they call it a superstition, uh, outside of your home. Don't preach, where actually it, they have a forbidden where policy. Where it can leak out onto the public. Yeah, 
to, to, to forbid anybody under 18 years old, children, students, they are regarded as successors of communism. They are not allowed, uh, I mean, to, be, to hear the gospel. And then the, the, the Apple, I mean, the Apple uh, uh, company adhere to the Chinese Communist Party's order by removing all the Bible apps from the Apple Store to the Chinese uh, iPhone users in China from two years ago. So the Chinese Apple users cannot find uh, any uh, Bible. They can't or find Bible, Bible resources no, no. if it, they're using an Apple. That's phone. right. And the children are totally forbidden. Uh, the students, um, if you are found as a Christian in your elementary school, high school, or even university, you have to make a public confession by signing a Communist Party prepared declaration that you denounce your faith publicly. Millions of Chinese ch Christian children constantly were forced to do that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Jeez. So you said, and I know that we talked about it earlier, but uh, John, could you elaborate more on the Mayflower yes. uh, Church and how that's the current mission current, yeah. that China, or the one of the main missions that China Aid is 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 on right now, right? Yeah. So that's kind of one of our main focuses right now. Um, of course, we have a lot of cases and a lot of different churches that need help, but the Mayflower Church is actually their nickname. So they're their real church name is Shenzhen Holy Reformed. Um, they escaped China in 2019. Uh, and that has mostly to do with kind of what we've been talking about. Um, they, their pastor, Pastor Pan Yangguang, uh, he uh, was part of a house church uh, petition. Well, maybe not petition, but just a declaration of faith. Um, he signed on with 400 other church pastors. and. Um, since that time in 2018, his church was heavily persecuted. Um, the government came in and shut down their private school. Um, they raided their church building. And it was getting to the point where a lot of the members were fearful for their lives and for their children to be forced to go to public school where they're brainwashed with atheistic education. So the church members gathered together and they voted to leave. Um, and over the course of three or four months in 2019, they, they left and went to South Korea. And uh, luckily, um, through COVID, they weren't allowed to go into South Korea, the Chinese government, and take them. So they stayed in South Korea for um, a couple of years, maybe almost three. Um, and they, uh, in August of this year, uh, made the move to go to Thailand. And so they're in Thailand right now, they're applying for UN refugee status, um, which will allow them through the UN to find um, you know, some kind of religious freedom wherever they may end up. But we're hoping and praying that um, the UN sends them to America and that they can be here with us. Um, but they're processing them as individual families. But these are, you know, there's 60 plus members now. There are 64, there've been several children have been born since they left. Um, and so it's very, it's very um, intense because it's not just like leaving and, you know, culture shock wherever you go and ostracization because mm -hmm. of your, you know, different ethnicity. It's, they, they're being hunted down. I mean, there are, there are Chinese operatives that are in Thailand that are actively seeking them out. They've been uh, harassed, uh, not even really harassed, their, their, their family members in China are being interrogated and uh, asked to, you know, release disclose some kind of information, their information, disclose their location through WeChat, their social media. They're, they're doing anything they can to get a hold of these Christians. So, so how, how are you guys supporting their, uh, their efforts right now? So Jonathan actually personally flew there to Thailand, I mean to, to South Korea, even to escort them out because they are facing uh, uh, the imminent threat. I mean, their family members and, uh, were being interrogated in China. They are being, uh, the member, church members were being described as traitors, you know, harming China's national security. They even received harass phone call, harassment phone calls from the Chinese consulate in uh, uh, South Korea. And um, so 
they are very, very scared, of course, you know, being kidnapped with, uh, you know, now 35 children, 29 adults. And um, so at that point, um, and the, U, the, the South Korea was very uh, scared, South Korean government scared of China. So they repeatedly refused to grant them asylum in South Korea, although they're a Democrat ally uh, with the United States. It's kind of sad uh, because of China's uh, intimidation. Right. So that's how, why we kind of uh, have uh, uh, China aid. We, you know, besides the uh, continuation of uh, financial support for their living expenses, um, for their legal uh, challenge uh, in um, South Korea, we send our team members uh, along with uh, several of our partners together. Uh, to uh, help them, es escort them to Thailand. Um, so John has, first hand, has first-hand knowledge uh, over there, meeting with his children, you know, terrified uh, family members. Um, but they're also, you know, very uh, joyful, right? Yeah. Knowing that uh, this is uh, part of their, the, they call the, the, the path of the cross, uh, right. their faith. And um, so they were all escorted there I mean, the Jonathan mentioned about that declaration. So mm -hmm. it was a, a declaration um, during the um, uh, the year when uh, Communist Party leader Xi Jinping basically forced the Chinese national legislature to pass a law on the national, basically regulate religious activities um, and uh, forbidding all the house churches to gather. And um, so this group of uh, house church leaders with their real name, their cell phone number, over 400, s uh, including Pastor Pan from early, uh, from this uh, church, the uh, Shenzhen Holy Reformed Church or Mayflower Church. Um, the declaration itself was really said, we, uh, is for our faith. I mean, they yeah, are- Yeah, it's not really a petition. Yeah, it's not a real, like uh, even, close to the Bauman Declaration, you know, when the Hitler uh, it was uh, in Germany. So kind of, uh, it was non, very minimum, very non-political. They basically listed, this is what we believe. Because of this belief, we don't think the persecution, you know, against God's church, these regulations are valid. And they're, they even declared, I mean, according to the Chinese own constitution, this is unconstitutional. They basically um, uh, uh, urge an appeal to the Chinese authorities to repeal this uh, regulation, stop persecution against the God's people. And for that, I mean, they were regarded as rebels and uh, one by one, especially these leaders uh, like Pastor Wang Yi, he was one of the leaders. He was sentenced to nine years imprisonment. His whole church uh, called Early Rain Covenant Church was totally smashed. And uh, with over uh, two, three hundred members were arrested, and many were tortured. And um, then uh, Pastor Pan's church was also, their school was totally uh, forbidden and banned, and uh, every family member were being taken, and uh, Pastor Pan cannot even go back to his own home. Uh, so that's the context why they exiled themselves. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah, so we, we really uh, need uh, constant prayer uh, urgent prayer for them, uh, this uh, early rain covenant church. Uh, the story is on our website called chinaaid.org. Uh, I'm sure, yeah, the, the GLC yeah, had uh, listed in the past. So tell them a little bit about chinaaid.org or, or how, can they also give, can they, can they give donations yeah, on so that? Yeah, so we're a 501c3 mm -hmm. uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, you can uh, go to chinaaid org and you can sign uh, for prayer uh, uh, sign up for prayer so you will receive uh, really uh, very accurate uh, information about those brothers and sisters we mentioned uh, the persecution you can pray more specifically and you can also uh, involve in uh, training and other projects uh, like uh, and you can of course give for supporting these family prisoners, and mm. we're s supporting uh, many, many uh, every year. Um, so we're also giving out this Sunday school in a box, we call it. Basically, it's uh, hmm. uh, with a little chip, like uh, our phone chip, uh, 
uh, with over 1,000 videos uh, from Jesus movie to the whole John MacArthur's uh, uh, Sunday really? school uh, teaching uh, wow. in video format. Wow. And uh, uh, vegetarian stories. And so they're able to have these <laughs> kinds of resources. Yeah. For so their children we, this year it's, alone, yeah. we distributed, we manufactured in China secretly. Secretly, uh, yeah. Good things that the Lord has really hide them well. And I hope even with uh, what I said, they wouldn't, they wouldn't discover. Uh, yeah. And uh, we pray the Lord's cover continues. Right. We distributed this year alone 27,000 sets already. Wow. That benefited wow. almost a half a million Chinese uh, Christian children. Wow. Yeah. Can they get this book? God's oh, yeah. so, Double some, uh, Agent. So that's just my uh, um, kind of memoir because God's Double Agent. The reason was uh, because uh, I used to work in the Communist Party school uh, when I was in China teaching English to the Communist Party leaders during the daytime. In the evening and the weekend, I was an underground church pastor. So when I was in best, uh, interviewed um, in the U.S. by the media, I said, oh, you're a God's double agent. So that's how Baker how Publishing you got that. House yeah, got this. And um, thankfully, our uh, Midland uh, hometown um, First Lady Laura Bush was the first I, one. I was in reading that. <laughs> Miss Laura Bush, she said, Bob Fu has dedicated his life to bringing freedom of religion to the Chinese people. His story is a testimony to the power of faith and an inspiration to people struggling to break free from oppression. And I, this, is, this is a physical oppression. But what I'm seeing, what I think you're seeing, is also a spiritual oppression too. It because, is, yeah. Because in China, they're, they're physically oppressed, but they aren't, right. they aren't being spiritually. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not oppressed spiritually. That's they're, right. They're full in of their, joy. They're full of peace. Even in, yeah, in Chen. Like, uh, they're seeing in, visions, in prison. right? Yes, yes. They're, they're, count, they're literally counting it all joy when going through trials and tribulations. Amen. Amen. You know? That's right. yes, yes. And so when it, it, to, whenever I hear these, these stories, I get excited on the inside. It makes me want mm -hmm. to go share the gospel when I'm at the store or when I'm at work or wherever I'm at. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's what I'm hoping that more and more Americans, the more that, that they hear these types of stories, that at the very least, at the very least, they get provoked on the inside and they get, they get freed from oppression on the inside Amen. Right, to where they can live a life in love with God. Amen. Right, yeah. the, way that, the way that these guys are living life right. in love with God because you can't, you can't face persecution head on torture head on unless you're truly in love with Jesus and love what it is that he set you free from right. and you understand it. Then you can turn around and say, no, I could never turn my back yeah. right. on Christ. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, I think it's interesting is, is, you know, so many times in American culture, we ask the question, would you die for Christ? <laughs> would you die for Jesus? But I think a lot of People need to answer the question, do you even live for Jesus, you know? And clearly our, our brothers and sisters are just a great example of that in, in China. They're willing to do both, so. Wow, they're willing, to, they're willing to die for Christ because they're- Living for him already. They're living for him and then now they're put into a situation where they have to be prepared to die for him. Yeah. That, that, that is an undertone right now I've noticed here and, and a lot of I don't, I don't want to say a lot, but I've not, I'm noticing pastors bringing to forefront the persecuted church. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're using that to kind of revitalize their own church, which is co commendable in my book, you know, and, and saying, yes, that is the main question right now. Are we willing to live for Christ, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, as uh, Paul actually said, um, Second Timothy said, if, anyone wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, you will be persecuted. So many people ask me like, what's the secret recipe <laughs> uh, for the word, like largest, uh, the, the, the church growth since the time of Adam, you know, in China from Communist Party, when the Communist Party took over China, there's less, less, uh, less than one million Christians in China. 
after 70 years of communism, now they have over 130 million. So that's over 130 fold growth. And despite of the persecution of China in 10 years, Cultural Revolution uh, declared an atheistic state. And even the government sanctioned wow. church was totally wiped out. Oh my goodness. And uh, so, but the Lord, is, it is the Lord. So when you chose to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, then the persecution comes. And then when the persecution comes, you live out who Jesus is. And then the cross will attract people to come to follow. Right. The church right. growth come that round, not just simply inviting a few Communist Party members to be the elders of your church. It will cause a revival. I think it's, uh, as Jonathan mentioned, it's really the other way around. It's uh, are we living for Christ faithfully and godly? And uh, then the persecution will come. Then you are faithful. Then the revival will come. I think that's, uh, that's, that's why I also always appreciate, uh, uh, you know, folks like you, uh -huh. JLC, that you give uh, the, a voice uh, for those voiceless brothers and sisters yeah. at the GLC. And I know uh, you guys also, uh, a nonprofit, need support. So please, yeah, support GLC. So, support right. GLC, yeah. support China Aid. Um, one last thing that I would really, I'd really like to bring home and maybe you can close on this is you said then revival will come mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it it the people that i've met that love the lord the most they're not the loudest people mm -hmm. but their life is loud yeah. the way that they want to be holy as mm -hmm. god is holy yeah. is loud what is one last thing uh prayer maybe that you would say for for glc viewers before we as we close yeah, I remember in the scripture when I read uh, the Lazarus, you know, after he was resurrected, and then the Bible did not record any single word from Lazarus from that point on, but then it recorded from that point on, many followed Jesus. Mm. So I think that echoed, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Jake, your point that, uh, you know, Sometimes you don't need a, a loud speaker uh, before you shine the light, the, the resurrect Jesus on your life, and Christ uh, will himself will attract uh, people to follow him. Wow. Uh, so I think that's, I hope our DLC uh, viewers also kind of uh, um, through this episode um, have a deeper understanding, I mean, that's what the scripture after all said. We are not only privileged to believe in Christ, but also to suffer for him. Mm. As, uh, suffering for Christ is also a privilege. It's not an exception. So just count them as a privilege and a joy. Wow. Well, we're out of time. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in to Light of the Southwest, and we will see you next time. But please remember to keep the persecuted church in your prayers.